Hi everybody, it is July 9, 2019. Okay, let's do it. Tens of thousands of fish dead. Dead after Jim Beam warehouse fire spilled bourbon into local river. Thanks to my subscriber for sending this along. Tens of thousands of fish are dying from water contaminated with Jim Beam after a reported white, white, uh, warehouse fire resulting in 45,000 barrels uh, being displaced. The fish aren't dying from alcohol poisoning. They reportedly can't breathe due to sugar from the alcohol creating a microbe feeding frenzy in the water where they swim, which is reducing oxygen levels in the water and suffocates the fish. The plume of alcohol in the river stretches 23 miles. Our, uh, all right. Oh, you know, uh, Corporations, they seem to walk free, never blamed for all of the destruction that has taken place on the planet. No, the blame is on you, the individual, for driving an SUV, using air conditioning, and breathing. It, it is in Kentucky. Uh, my God, you know, the two-legged, you really have to wonder. Maybe the elite are right on, spot on, in terms of the human being being the cause of so much destruction. that other species, other animals, four-legged fish, aquatic life, you know, they are suffering because of the human being. And I really can't stand it. I cannot stand it. I will link below to everything if you want to watch the fire. Click on the link below. All right, Wednesday's weird tropical storm is the perfect reason to upgrade carrot weather. Forbes, this guy writes about how to do more with your consumer gadgets. Get rid of your consumer gadgets. They're dangerous to your health. They're dangerous to the health of those who are in close proximity and yeah, you can't get through to people. Well, just listen to what he writes. Living on the Gulf Coast of Florida, I'm used to tropical weather popping up in July. What I'm not used to, however, is system spawning from overland storms that get pushed into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, well, it appears a whole lot of people are not used to that. Uh, the, the video that I posted earlier, we had this, I guess, meteorologist or someone feigning to be a meteorologist claim that it was a trough in Georgia that was, well, now in the Gulf and it was going to sit there for several days, organize itself into a tropical storm. Oh, but then another mainstream media article says, no, uh, Missouri, yeah, yeah. Uh, tropical storms now start in Missouri. And we're supposed to believe that. Uh, okay, so this guy is going with it. 
He's going with it. Yeah, that's right. We now live in such an upside down climate apocalypse that the Midwest is generating tropical storms. Okay. Um, I didn't highlight anything else because I didn't think this guy is worthy of my time. But you can you can read up on the Carrot Weather app. Okay, Anthony. Um, you know, brain cells. You know, work them out. Just you know, like a physical workout. You know, lifting weights. Work out those brain cells and do some research on weather modification because we don't have tropical storms that start in the Midwest. More insanity from the climate group without supporting evidence. You know what? These, this climate change, all of the flooding that we have seen for months, and then the articles that they're never ending and it's all due to climate change. How do we combat this? How do we counter it? How do we counter it when we have people like this writing for Forbes magazine? And yeah, hey Anthony, Tony, Tony, I'll call you Tony. Uh, don't you think that's a little unusual? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not used to it. I said that. Okay, well, look into weather modification. Uh, it's not an upside-down climate apocalypse that now the Midwest is generating tropical storms. It's man generating tropical storms, and you're getting information that really should push you to investigate the unusualness Ness. Ness, ness. Right? Right? Isn't that how adults used to operate? They just don't anymore? Or is this Anthony guy, a mainstream media reporter? You know, I just, you know, I write on what more you can do with your consumer gadgets. But, you know, hey, you're writing for Forbes. Why don't you just stretch yourself? I'm so sick of these people. I, I'm sorry. I, yeah, but I'm really sick of these people. Save the planet. Eliminate all humans. Breakthrough report 2019. Oh, God, another breakthrough report. National Center for Climate Change has issued a report without any scientific evidence whatsoever offering an opinion predicting the end of human civilization as we know it the report begins in 2017 2018 the Australian Senate inquired into the implications of climate change for Australia's national security the inquiry found that climate change is a current and existential national security risk one that threatens the premature extinction of earth originating intelligent life or the permanent and drastic destruction of its potential for desirable future development. I told the inquiry that after nuclear war human induced global warming is the greatest threat to human life on the planet. The report is but 10 pages of unsupported opinion offering what many in the press are calling a terrifyingly entitled existential climate related security risk glimpses 30 years into the future to the near 2050 and the results are grim. The report recommends what can be done to avoid such a probable but catastrophic future. Well, it is clear from our, our preliminary scenario that dramatic action is required this decade if the hothouse or if scenario is to be avoided to reduce this risk and protect human civilization a massive global mobilization of resources is needed in 
the coming decade to build a zero emissions industrial system and set and train the restoration of a safe climate. This would be akin in scale to the World War II emergency mobilization. These people are truly off the wall. Yes, they are. They have no understanding of what zero emissions, a zero emissions world would be like. And in fact, such a world is impossible. A volcano puts more CO2 into the atmosphere than years of soccer moms driving their kids to school. People believe this horseshit. Then you have the mainstream nutcases who spew the bullshit onto mainstream media publications. And then you have the non-thinking citizens in all of our Western countries in particular. Just, just believing it. They're believing it. More believe it than not. And that's why we are in such trouble. So, all of these weather events, in part, it is to manipulate the public because they were losing on that climate change belief thing. Oh, yeah. Few people believed in climate change. So they brought it out every single day, severe weather, severe weather, severe weather. And believe it or not, people are going to be hit, hitting their knees. Please, please, please do something. Potential storm surge could cause Mississippi River to rise to 19 feet. All right. This uh, tropical storm that, you know, started in Missouri, it, I think is going to be um, pretty bad. Hurricane and tropical storm watches could be issued for part of Gulf Coast tomorrow. Wow. Okay, now they're bringing it up to hurricane. And indeed they are. Indeed they are. In fact, the um, National Hurricane Center all right, here. What do we have here? A broad, low pressure located over the Florida Panhandle and the far northeastern Gulf of Mexico is producing widespread but disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions are conducive for development and a tropical depression is expected to form late Wednesday or Thursday while the low moves slowly westward across the northern Gulf of Mexico, tropical storm, hurricane, storm surge blotches could be required for a portion of the northern Gulf Coast on Wednesday. Don't worry, the Air Force, they're sending a reconnaissance aircraft to investigate the disturbance tomorrow afternoon. Okay, this is it. Really? Uh, well, what happened to, you know, the, 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 well, wasn't it here earlier? No, that was clouds. Did we see anything on radar earlier? Let's, uh, let's check it out, but we sure do see these frequencies, these micro, oh wow, oh wow, up here too, okay, oh, and in Florida, microwaves coming through the panhandle into the Gulf, ah, an extremely low frequency hit, and another one, and another one, and another one, oh, okay, well, they're trying, they are trying, aren't they, to get it going. All right, so what you are seeing here is real time. It is 10.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What I captured at 4 p.m. Uh, is this. 
4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look, it's uh, going away. Ah, going away in the Gulf. Hmm. Okay. Well, then we'll just bring on more here. Uh, what's going on? What's going on? Look, it's disappearing. Well, what's going on is all of this is manufactured by man. Well, this was three hours later, so seven. it was 7.39 p.m. on the east, uh, the, on the east coast. Well, they're still trying to get something into the Gulf. Well, it's hard from Missouri, Carol. I know, I know. I know. It would have been easier if that, uh, whatever she was, um, that mainstream media in Atlanta, it would have been easier if they did it from Georgia, but no, Missouri, they had to do it from Missouri. Okay, so 7 p.m. tonight, and the whole thing is artificially produced. Get it into the Gulf, come on, or just bring this one about from Florida. Bring it up, they meet both of them. Get frequencies, just push them together, and then you'll have that tropical storm that will actually develop into a hurricane. Look, you guys on the Gulf, be prepared for, be prepared for something. Louisiana, Panhandle, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, East Texas, that's right, East Texas. So this was the generation of cloud taking place in the Gulf. I guess they just haven't been able to get it together. Ooh, somebody's going to be in trouble. Their algorithms are just not working. Look, guys, I'm so unbelievably sick of the world that we are living in. So I apologize for, oh, my attitude. But I don't know what to do with this world anymore. I really don't. All right, I'm going to play some videos for you. <laughs> Thunderstorms for the UK and a possible hurricane in the USA. Ah, the Met Office in the UK. You want to listen to what they have to say about our uh, tropical storm slash hurricane? Come on. All right, I'll do it. Here we go. This is very interesting. This was a deep air of low pressure across here. Georgia, which then tracked across towards the uh, Gulf of Mexico. See surface temperature there at the moment, 29, 30 degrees Celsius, so well above the threshold, which allows these thunderstorms and these, um, these hurricanes to be fueled. 27 degrees is what you need, really, in terms of sea surface temperature, three degrees above that, and quite unusual, really. And yes, we're keep, keeping a keen eye on this. If you are concerned about this storm, maybe have family living over there, worried about the track, maybe heading over there, check out the National Hurricane Center website. It's got so lots of information on there. Currently, they're saying, yes, it is going to develop. We are expecting some potentially very, very heavy rainfall associated with it, particularly for the eastern and northern Gulf states. But at this moment, it's too early to determine the magnitude of this storm, the location of the storm, or how strong the winds will be, or associated storm surge. Obviously, we'll keep you posted here on our social media channels as well. Okay, so she just said, it's too early to tell <laughs> anything. That's what she said. It's too early to tell how much rain, how much wind, how much storm surge. Um, but it's definitely going to be happening. It's definitely going to be happening. Guys, you got to get it together here. you got to bring something out, don't you? I mean, won't you be perceived? as really silly? No. No, because our citizens in our Western countries in particular just don't know how to think anymore. There is no storm developing here. Okay. Well, here. The unusualness of it, that's one of the yeah. reasons why there's so much uncertainty, mm. because it's... <laughs> the unusualness of it, and that's the reason why there's so much uncertainty. Unusual. Odd. 
the upside down climate apocalypse. Okay, severe storm threat, North Dakota. Bring flash flooding in Fargo, North Dakota, and cars flooded. This is Kearney, Nebraska, right here. And new images of that record downpour in the D.C. area 24 Look hours this. ago. This car washed away in Potomac, Maryland. Oh, my God. Okay, did you see that? Did, you did see that, right? Okay, this is what was happening in D.C. All right, do you think they're bringing it on to get people? They're forcing a belief in climate change. And people are stupid enough to go there. Why? Because, sorry to say this, self-centeredness, laziness, leave me alone. It's easier to accept a lie than it is to seek out the truth. The truth requires too much work. So I would rather just accept, accept this lie. And all of those people are dangerous. They are dangerous second time in five months. Parts of Nebraska are once again underwater. Heavy rainfall just last night left residents with uh, problems in several communities. Standing water and flooding of some buildings. Some of those areas with almost nine inches of rain. Cars, of course, abandoned in streets. Water up to four feet deep in some spots there. Rescue crews have been working since then to help folks. Many cars still stranded today. And Highway 30 between Kearney and Elm Creek is still closed. Wow. Okay. So you saw probably three feet of water in DC, four feet of water in Nebraska, same time, and cars stranded. Oh my God. Okay. People are really suffering the consequences. And yes, I get angry because people are refusing to think. They don't want to think. This is Nebraska. This is a. Uh, it's one of those storm, you know, not for broadcast. So can't play it. Everything is linked to below. You can check it out. But just because I get angry that they're refusing to think and letting authority figures think for them, I still don't want anybody to suffer the consequences. And we've got, we've got a whole lot. suffering these consequences. Yeah, this is Nebraska. And, you know, Nebraska has been hit a whole lot. A whole lot. But, my fellow Americans, you really do need to start questioning why you're having so much rain and why your streets are flooding with every rain because this is a radical change and radical change should necessitate should they, they it's required in the brain radical changes okay it begs questions and this is in north carolina Yes, yeah, Scott, and as you can imagine, the emotions are still high. People frustrated. If you can believe it, some people still don't have power or air conditioning. So people are waiting for that help they so desperately need after water as high as that yellow tape gushed into their homes last month. But to see people go through this type of devastation. Sorry. And then, like, you, people are like, oh, you're back to normal now, right? No, I'm no, no. not back to normal. Speaking with Governor Roy Cooper, Riverside Drive resident Debbie Barefoot wanted him to know a month after dozens of homes were flooded out here, her community is still devastated. I hope it does some good. I hope you, because I don't feel like it will, I hope you make a liar out of me and show me what you can do for us down here. Governor Cooper speaking with her and others impacted as he toured the damage today, promising. And I want Governor you to see, Cooper this is that, okay, I'm sorry, these people, Governor Cooper, oh, and he looks into the camera like, yeah, and this stupid little smile on his face. These people are suffering. This, this flooding occurred, what, two weeks ago? No electricity, air conditioning, their homes devastated by the flood. And look at this jackass. 
I'm sorry. I'm so I, I, look. You know, Americans, please. You you need to have a psychic change. And I'm glad that that woman said what she said. You know, um, this is how Americans need to be treating these people that they the this woman pays his salary. Are you kidding me? But to see people go through this type of devastation and then like you people are like, oh, you're back to normal now, right? Uh, no, we're not back to normal. Speaking with Governor Roy Cooper, Riverside Drive resident Debbie Barefoot wanted him to know a month after dozens of homes uh -huh. were flooded out here, her community is still devastated. I hope it does some good. I hope you, because I don't feel like it will, I hope you make a liar out of me. I hope you make a liar out of me and actually do something, Cooper. Show me what you can do for us down here. Governor Cooper speaking uh, with... What does he care? He's comfortable. Ah not only comfortable, but he gets to live a really nice life while, and he knows full well about weather modification. He sure knows about Agenda 2030 because he's implementing it in North Carolina. Okay, you know, yeah, um, my passionate response to what is clearly gross immorality. I've always been perceived as, oh God, she's so negative and she's so angry. I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm tired of just being surrounded by people who behave like this, who don't give a shit about anything, but they go off as if their shit don't stink, and it sure does. And it sure does. Americans have to break through their living this pretense of thinking that they're good moral people when nothing could be further from the truth. Oh, man. This, I believe, is in Los Angeles area. And the water covered the garden. Mommy, get on me. You want me to hold you? This family of six built their home themselves with cash six years ago. They spent years adding on as funds were available. Then, at the end of May, 18 inches of water flooded the property. We lived without running water and electricity while we paid for those things. And so um, we, to leave that, very much, there's been times where we're like, why did we do it? The family also tries to create their own food supply, but when they returned, the majority of the garden had washed away. It's a death of, of, of a piece of us because we are now having to, hmm. things that we are so passionate about, living debt free and trying to be the change you want to see in the world. We're having to set a lot of that aside in the interest of our children. Volunteer. You see why it's so devastating that man is controlling this weather. So many people are trying to live these, you know, alternate lifestyles, doing what they believe is right for themselves, uh, what's right for Mother Earth, and they get destroyed. It's very sad. It angers me every single day, and it also saddens me every single day. Sorry my computer is so slow, but what is also radically different is the flooding that lingers on day after day, week after week, month after month, depending on the area. And this is in, um, oh, it's Florida, Jacksonville. Now, one resident I spoke with says that it does not take much rain for this to become a problem. And it's left him and many others wondering what is going to be done to fix it. 
Frankie Gill says that rains from the past two weeks have not gone anywhere. When new trailers were brought in, he says a water main line burst. About four months ago, they dug up an area over here and uh, it drained after about two days. And then when a rain came again, it filled back up. Now he says cars are avoiding the water daily. Uh, well, we have to drive through each other's yards to get around it. One car yesterday found out by pulling through it and they had to push the car out because it quit running. We asked management what else is being done to fix the issue. A property manager told First Coast News that their corporate office asked them to not speak on the issue. Gill is hoping for less talk and more action to fix this problem. Why hasn't anything been done? Um, to me, it's like... Let me answer, sir. Nothing is being done because they want you out of that area. They want to destroy you. Oh, you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. I'm not going to listen to you. It sounds like you're off your meds. This is what we're dealing with. Can you imagine if everybody was awake to what is taking place here? Could you imagine if everybody just stopped paying taxes, local, state, federal, you stop paying the salaries of these government officials that lie to you continually and do everything to destroy you, and then you band together in your communities and you fight these psychopathic... Oh, I can't think of a word that's not a curse. Wouldn't that be an energy that you would want to be around? I sure would. People prepare for a possible storm. At the Baldwin County EMA and other emergency management agencies, they've already started getting the word out on social media. Have your plan in place. Have your supplies for 72 hours ready and stay up to date. Officials say this storm is a good chance for them to prepare as well. Oh, absolutely. It's a great opportunity that we utilize to take a look at our plans and our procedures that we have in place for our staff. It's a great opportunity to do a dry run and look at the ways that we interact. And Are you kidding me? It's a great opportunity for you to do a dry run? Uh, and there will be people who will have their homes destroyed and businesses destroyed. It's a great opportunity. Hey, and I'm not only going to say it once, I'm going to say it twice. It's a great opportunity. What the hell is wrong with people? Oh, man. Well, they said... I just want, uh, I was sent this, and I'm going to play a few minutes, but I have to tell you, man, I'm done with this. I am so done with this. Here you go. What, what manner of man, man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? So that's why I'm not, um, I know there's a lot of theories about everything, all the weather's being geoengineered and that type of thing. Um, my concern in doing that is you're elevating people to the level of gods. So I think we need to be careful with that speculation because I think that it's, it's a little bit dangerous because of the way you elevate people. I agree there are bad people out there they want to do bad things. They want to run everything. They want to control you. They want to take all your stuff. And I agree with that. I mean, I, I don't doubt that they're out there now. Sometimes I don't think they're very well organized because they've been at it for hundreds and hundreds of years. And they really haven't accomplished their goal. But when the time is right, God will sort of pull back the veil and allow them to flourish for a short season. All right. I am done. And you can write whatever the hell, oh, Carol's going to hell because, you know, I don't believe what you believe. Oh, I'm stupid because I haven't done any research, real research, which is the Bible. 
haven't you looked at Revelations, Carol? And this guy is talking about, oh, there is, you know, it, there's a problem with this because you elevate people to the status of gods. I don't even think in those terms. We have psychopaths who are using technology today to destroy people, and that is very real. So this guy is dangerous if people are actually listening to him and just, well, not questioning what he is saying. And God is going to allow them to flourish for a while. Did you get a call from God? Oh, it's in the Bible somewhere. You know, a belief is not fact. It is not the truth. It is simply a belief. It is simply a belief. This is why religion is a danger. This is why religion has been such a destructive force. Because this kind of belief and thinking and, oh, well, yeah, there are some people who think that, you know, man is controlling weather and bringing on, no, 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 oh, you, you elevate them to God status then. No, I don't. I know we have the technology. I know that this weather is being used as a weapon. I know that many people are suffering the consequences, but you would prefer to think that God is allowing people to flourish, what, to bring about this destruction? Oh, wait, so if man is bringing about the destruction, then you're elevating them to God's status, aren't you? Okay, so this destruction then is not about man controlling the weather. This destruction is, uh, uh, come, it's coming about maybe God. Oh, right. Uh, a whole lot of people believe it's God's wrath for taking God out of the country. Well, this country had, oh, over 90% Christians for all time. And now Christians are still the majority. So who took God out of the country? Christians. There are very few real, genuine Christians. Most, hey, I like what this guy says because uh, I don't have to think it's man using leather as a weapon. And I don't have to go to, oh, we're at war. They're just using unconventional weapons. And that then lets me just go home and do nothing, right? Yes, uh, God. God is going to allow the flourishment of destruction. And then God's going to come back and set everything straight. Fanciful thinking. And I am tired of it. Because, you know, it does. A whole lot of people have that kind of thinking because it works for them. It works for them to just continue on being self-centered, lazy, hypocritical. All links are below. I don't know what to do with this anymore. I, 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 I honestly don't. I honestly don't. When you see so many people who are suffering now, when you have so many of your own subscribers who are suffering the consequences of what is taking place, and when you have suffered the consequences of evil, and it has destroyed your life, you get really angry at fanciful thinking. However, it is brought about in one's mind, because you understand. 
Evil needs to be fought. It needs to be faced. It needs to be eradicated. Not, not to let it just spread on and, ah, well, God eventually will get here. And for those who say, who leave me comments, you know, it's the people who have God and who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's the protection they need. But there are so many Christians who are getting destroyed. Many Christians who have the same belief who are getting destroyed. No one's protecting them. So is there something askew in that thinking? Oh, you pray right. You got it down. Your belief is solid. All of those people who've been destroyed, who also have the same belief, uh, well, you know, clearly, they needed to repent. I guess they needed to repent, and they didn't. So God got them. Enough. Enough. All links are below.